I'm James from Battery and today I'll be going over our wizard setup in our Toolkit 2 software. So we've got our device connected over USB and we've got our software running here and we can see that we've connected it, that one's green, we've got the software up to date, that one's green, uh, we've got the firmware up to date, that one's green, but our wizard setup is, hasn't been run yet. Um, so we can either click here to open it or down here. Um, generally with these status icons you can click them to find out uh, what's wrong uh, or we can go into tools and wizard setup. So what the wizard aims to do is just teach your uh, cell monitor a little bit about what sort of system you'll be running. So what chemistry your cells, so that determines what voltage you charge to and balance out and all that sort of thing. Um, also stuff like how many cells will you be running, uh, will you be running a shunt, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so it, or, it will know a lot once we plug it in about your cells, but it just needs to be taught a little bit at the start. Okay, so we've opened up the wizard software and we can see that we've got a few options to set. So to start with, we'll go with the battery type uh, or the chemistry. We've got a few presets depending on what you want to do. So um, most people in storage projects these days are running lithium ion phosphate batteries and there are two presets for that. A typical, which mimics what you'll see on a uh, cell data sheet, and long life, which has slightly lower um, targets, i.e. Uh, 3.55 as a balancing target instead of 3.65, and um, they'll really extend the life of your cells and not result in any loss in performance. Um, due to the way that the lithium ion phosphate curve is very flat, um, you really don't gain much capacity by going uh, a little bit higher on the charge voltage. Lithium ion, on the other hand, you do gain performance by charging to a higher voltage. Um, for example, our performance plan will charge up to 4.2 and uh, this one will only charge to 4.1 to eke out a bit more life. So that's actually more of a decision, but if you're going lithium ion phosphate, which most storage projects do, then uh, you'll want to pick the long life option. There's also an LTO uh, preset as well. LTO is a bit of a weird chemistry. It's very uh, very heavy, but you can get good co current capacity out of it. Um, thousands and thousands of cycles, way more than, than anything else really. And uh, yeah, it can actually discharge into the negatives, but it's very heavy, so uh, we don't see it often. Um, we'll pick uh, lithium ion phosphate long life here. Alrighty, so next is the type of cell monitor that you've got plugged in. Uh, these days we're recommending the Cellmate K9, it's our latest design, and uh, it's got some big improvements over the previous Blockmon design. So it has a heatsink, uh, which means you can run it really hard and, uh, and not run into wear and tear on the, on the balancing device. Um, it's wired individually, so it's a bit easier to wire up to a pack. Um, there's no kind of serial wire that has to run through, it's just one wire to each cell um, and a couple more for, for ground and positive. And uh, yeah, it's a bit easy to install and it's externally powered too. This one's really important. So if one of your cells goes dead or, or gets disconnected, um, the cell monitor will uh, keep working, uh, whereas a previous one would interrupt the communication chain and uh, you wouldn't see about half your pack if it failed in the middle. So these days we're recommending the K9 um, and there's a couple of options for that. There's an LTO variant. Um, because LTO has a uh, nominal voltage of 2.1 volts, uh, which is about half of that of a typical lithium ion cell, uh, the hardware has to be a bit different and all the targets have to be different too. So we'll go with uh, K9 16 to 3S and we'll tell it how many cells we have. So uh, normally this is 16 for a 48 volt uh, inverter or a 48 volt pack. So we'll hit 16, we'll hit enter. And uh, yeah, so if you're running multiple parallel strings here, i.e. multiple K9s, then you would make that different. But um, instead, uh, we're just gonna leave that as is. So the next thing is your shunt, or, or your coolant counting, or your state of charge counting. So uh, we're, we're going to select which shunt we have. In most cases, this will be the 500 amp uh, low voltage 85 volts for a 48 volt system. Um, make sure you, when you're wiring it, I've got a shunt here, there is a high voltage side and a low voltage side on the connector. 
um, that's labeled on the case there. So it's the high on top and the low on, on the bottom. Uh, if you don't select the right uh, value here and the right pin here, you'll either get saturation and all your values will be off or, or something like that. So we're going to select uh, shunt one to 500 amp low voltage. And here is where we put in our capacities. So um, typical EVE uh, lithium ion phosphate prismatic cells are 280 amp hours. So that's what we'll put in there. Um, now for additional settings, the CAN bus protocol, this refers to what inverter you'll be plugging in. Um, in this case, we're not going to be plugging one in, but we've got tons of integrations, um, tons of protocols that have been uh, tested by our users and a few reserved ones too. So uh, contact us if your inverter isn't on this list um, and we can tell you whether it's compatible with batteries that we can emulate and, and that sort of thing. We're going to hit none. Alrighty, so we just have to ship, uh, we just need to hit save here. We'll put in the pin code, which is on the back of the device as always. And uh, it'll run through and, and set all those settings for us. So we'll see uh, successful steps in the left here, and if anything goes wrong, we'll see it in the right. Alrighty, we can see that one completed successfully. We can head back to our chart. And once that loads, we can see that the wizard setup is green. We've run through that. And if we head to the hardware tab, we can see that a whole bunch of stuff has been set up for us. Those are the settings that we picked, and here are all the associated values. So, um, next up, we'll run through the uh, device sync and bypass test. And uh, yeah, so bypass test is for when we're plugging in a K9 and we're checking that it works. And a device sync is for shunt and other things. So um, that's it for this video. Um, tune in next time for those two. Thanks. See ya.